Okay, we're going to have a little bit of fun solving simultaneous equations. Now, there's a few methods that we can use, um, and some of those involve using our graphics calculator. So have those handy just in case. Right, so this video is going to look at the method of substitution. Um, so those three will go through. Just to remind you, or maybe it's new information to you, we can have three types of solutions um, when we do have two pairs of lines. So obviously, the ideal situation will be that they intersect at one unique spot, okay? It could occur that they don't intersect at all, and that's because they would have the same slope, but the lines are parallel. Um, when we've got it in our y-intercept form, we can easily see that they will be the same slope. The same thing applies if we have it in general form, okay? So if we have, uh, let's say, 4x take 2y, and then the other equation would also have to be 4x take 2y. Now, if this equals 5 and this equals 7, you will find that they will have the same slope, but they won't necessarily have the same y-intercept. So these will also be parallel. The other type that we could have is if we have infinitely many solutions, and that's basically where one line lies on top of the other. Okay, and that means there will be a multiple of each other. So if I've got the original y equals 4x plus 2, then you can see if I times the whole thing by 3, um, so 3y, 4 times 3 is 12 and so on, we would find that these would have infinitely many solutions because it's basically the same line, just a multiple of each other. Um, and of course, it could be that you've times it by a negative value. That's not going to change anything. All right, so let's see what happens if we decide we're going to solve this using an algebraic method. We're not going to graph it. We're going to solve and substitution is a great uh, little method. So what does substitution mean? It means to replace, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So if we look at this first pair, we'll call this number one. Right? We look over here, we've got y equals 2x take three, and then we've got a y in our equation. And so what we're going to do is exactly that. We're going to replace slash substitute this y value for that, because that's what we're saying, y equals. So we start with this equation and we say, okay, we've got the x, we've got the plus, and now instead of saying 2 times y, our y value from the first equation says y actually equals 2x take 3. So that's what we write. And then we come back to this equation and we're saying it has to equal 4. The joy of this is that we've now only got x's in this and we can now solve. Okay, when we had our two equations up here, we had an x and a y, so we could have lots of different values that would make each individual uh, equation true. But what's the only value for x and y that would make both of them true at the same time? So now we solve. We've got our x. We expand our brackets. 4x take 6 equals 4. And we play the game of let's get all the x's together, so gather our like terms, and the non-x's go on the other side. So to get rid of that take 6, we're going to plus 6, and now we can easily see, well, 5 times 2 gives me 10. Now, you haven't finished because we do want our y value, okay? Uh, you could sub it into either one of these equations, but clearly, the one that says y equals is going to be the easiest option. So, y equals 2 times, what is our x value? Well, we've said it's 2. So 2 times 2, take 3. So 4 take 3 is we get 1. So if this was, if this was two graphs, we're saying that they intersect at 2, 1. All right, onwards to number 2. Okay, still substitution, we're still going replace. So this time they're looking a little bit different. We've got a y equals this and a y equals this, and you can either look at it as well, if y equals both of those, well then they have to equal each other. Or, like we did before, we're doing the substitution, so they're substituting this y in place of that y. So here we go. So 4x take 3 has to equal minus 3x plus 11. So all we're doing now is doing a little bit of algebra solving. Get the x's on one side, non-x's on the other, and we're good to go. So let's go to the left. How do I get rid of a take 3x? We're going to add 3x. So it's going to be 7x. And how do I get rid of a take 3? You guessed it. Add 11 plus 3 is 14. 
and two seems to be a handy little option here. Um, once again, how am I going to find my y value? Well, you can pop it into either one of these equations. Okay, you might go the first one because it just seems easier. You could go the last one. Oh, dear me, it's going to be exactly the same answer. So uh, four twos, well, not the same, four twos are eight. Eight take three. I better write that down for you. Four times two take three. So we've got eight take three is five. And we're left with two five. Now, what if you had put it into the second answer? You should get the same value. So minus three times two is minus five. Minus five plus 11 uh, oop, minus 6 plus 11 is 5, a long week. All right, so hopefully that's making a little bit of sense to you. And we'll just finish off the very last one, number 3. Okay, hopefully we've got this substitution under control. We've tried to be tricky instead of saying y equals this time, it's an x equals, but the same rules are going to apply. Now, wherever x is here, we're going to substitute it with what we believe, or what we are told, x equals. So now instead of 4 times x, it's 4 times, what is x? x equals 4 take 3y. And now we're back to this equation. What comes after our 4 times x? Take 2y and equals minus 5. So now we're going to expand our brackets just like we did in every other question. We're going to gather any like terms. Um, and we're going to put the non-y's on the other side. So minus 2, 12y take 2 is minus 14y. Okay, minus 5 take 16 is minus 21. To get rid of the times negative 14, I'm going to divide. Two negatives make a positive. So now we end up with, we're not going to leave it as 21 over 14 because I can clearly see that 7 goes into both of those. So 7 goes into 21 three times and goes into 14 twice. How am I now going to find my x value? Same way we did with everything else, we're going to substitute. So x will equal 4 minus 3 times my y value, which is 3 over 2. Now you can do a little bit of uh, fractions in your head, or you can happily use your calculator. You should get minus 1 half. Okay, so this time these graphs will intersect at minus a half and 3 over 2. Now you can imagine if you had to graph this, you might not be as accurate to know that it's minus a half. You might think it's a quarter or a third or whatever. So that's why an algebraic process is really handy. All right, so hopefully that gives you a bit of a heads up into using substitution as a method for solving some simultaneous equations. Whenever we see an x equals or a y equals, that's where it's going to be go substitution.